probably did not expect that. Thank you. Hi everyone, it's Shelly Calva once again and welcome to the Dining Diva Show. In this episode, we are going to create a pasta dish. We're going to create a red sauce for our angel hair pasta. So, I know you guys are ready. I'm also ready. I'm going to go crank up my heat now so we can start their cooking process. Now, guys, I chose pasta because I'm getting requests for pasta dishes or pasta recipes. So here we go, here we are. What we're gonna do to begin with is, I kinda wanna toast my herbs first. So I have one tablespoon of dried basil here and one tablespoon of dried oregano right here. I'm gonna put it on my pan. I'm going to use a wide dish pan um, just so we can actually distribute all the cooking heat because pasta is so delicate guys so you want to work quickly um, with this particular ingredient. So I am actually toasting our dried herbs. You know, if you prefer to use um, fresh herbs, go for it guys. You can actually incorporate that later on. But if you use dried herbs, a uh, common practice for me is I like to heat it up, toast it a little, because I want all the aroma to come out first wow. before I start my whole cooking process. At this point, I could already smell it. Um, the aroma from our dried basil and dried oregano, I am going to add our um, olive oil. So what I'm gonna use is about four tablespoons of olive oil. You know guys, toasting your herbs is an incredible practice before cooking everything because this also gets to infuse your oil with the herby flavor. Wow. There you go. So I am already mixing the herb onto our olive oil. Mm, so good. Guys, it's smelling so good right here. So at this point, what I am going to do is already incorporate our garlic. Now I have about half a cup of thinly sliced fresh garlic right here in my bowl. You hear the sizzle? That is such a beautiful thing, guys. Beautiful. So, this is one. Mr. Garlic is not cooperating right. Mmm. <laughs> Go swim in the hot oil. So, if you could see what's going on in my pan right now, guys, this is just so glorious. You have your olive oil, you have your. Um, herbs and you have this delicious garlic so I put a lot of garlic because I like to have the garlic flavor in my pasta the garlic kit a nice nice garlic kit. I'm gonna toast my gar garlic um, perfectly I'm set on medium heat guys these guys are cooking so quickly beautiful now, I gotta be ready because I'm going to incorporate the base of our tomato sauce. So what I have here is a can of um, uh, tomatoes. It's actually sliced stewed tomatoes that I just bought it from the grocery store. The garlic are acting so beautifully right now. It's so exciting, delicious. It's it it smells so good. Wow! Mm. You can actually use this as a side dish for your steak. That's a good idea. Great idea. Guys. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to toss my stewed tomatoes. It's going to splatter. Yeah. Yeah. Let me grab this. Oh. 
Okay, I kind of expected that. But I just didn't want. Ooh, anything else in my hands and arms. The glazing method. So what I did was, after we roasted our herbs and our garlic and olive oil, there is some crusting that's happening in the bottom of our pan. So what I did is I used one can of stewed tomatoes to deglaze it. But it's also the very foundation of our red sauce. So there you go. No more splatter. Now it's safe for me to get into this action once again. It's looking so beautiful. Now guys, I would also recommend using uh, two cups of fresh tomatoes. So you can just dice up the tomatoes and use it in the place of this can. But at this point in time, I kind of have, uh, this is what I have, and I'm kind of used to all my tomatoes. But this is also a good uh, substitute because you can actually find um, stewed tomatoes that's already flavored with beautiful herbs like basil and oregano. So that's exactly what I'm using right now. So going back, I use a big can, one can, which equates to two cups. I'm gonna lower down my heat and let these babies simmer together. So right now, what I'm going to do is season our tomato mixture right here. I have here half a teaspoon of freshly ground pepper and I am going to incorporate it right now. Aside from my freshly ground pepper, I also have half a teaspoon of pepper flakes. So, I am going to make this pasta a little a little bite. Just a little heat actually will go a long way. You don't want a pasta that's very, very spicy. Just, it's actually, it will complement this tomato uh, sauce. At this point, guys, I am going to incorporate a, um, another star of our recipe, which is mussels. So what I have here actually is half of the box of the mussels that I bought from the grocery store. Um, it came with the shell, right? So these guys came with the shell. But what I did is, because I don't want to deal with all those barnacles in my pasta, it for me doesn't look very appealing. Unless your mussels, the mussels that you find, in a shell is has a very smooth and clean shell then go for it you can dump the shell because it's also aesthetically beautiful or pleasing in the eye if you actually have the shell to the muscle but in this case what I did was I removed each and every muscle from their shells and I'm just gonna use the muscles itself and plus you know what the muscles are quite big guys look they're actually large muscles so it's, it's, it's too much on the dish to include the shell. Now, I wanted to talk about uh, this muscle because I mentioned earlier that I used half of the box. So there's pretty much 30 pieces in a box that I found and um, I'm using half of it. So I have 15 pieces of large mussels here. So if you ever find in a fresh market, tiny little mussels, double up in the number, you can go for 30 pieces. No problem with that, guys. So, because I got gigantic <laughs> muscles here, I'm gonna go use 15 of them, and I'm going to incorporate them in my tomato sauce. So there's more story on the muscle, guys. So I don't, I did not stop. I'm not gonna stop uh, telling you what I did with these muscles. So the 15 shelf that I harvested from that muscle box what I did was 
before I incorporate our next ingredient. This, guys, this is muscle juice. Wow. Incredible, right? Look at that. Yummy. You can smell the muscle. This is muscle infused. So what I did here is I did not cook our muscle meat. What I did is after I separated all the muscles from the shell, I actually boiled the shells in two cups of water. So, believe it or not, you are going to extract delicious muscle juice from them. So, remember, there is this muscle right here that connects the shell onto the muscle meat. That guy right there will still give so much flavor. Hence, I got these guys just from my chicken shell. Okay, so, because you gotta be creative, guys, in your kitchen. I'll tell you why. Because, first and foremost, I don't know if there's any muscle broth available out there, but since I have not seen one, I create my own. That is one thing that I have actually learned from my grandma. She's amazing. She made everything, every single thing from scratch. Wow. You know, so my grandma, she's like pure Spanish. And she's amazing in the kitchen. She's like the best kitchen person in the whole world. Everything that comes out from the kitchen is just so incredible. So anyways, going back to it, she makes everything from scratch. She does not use bouillon cubes or all those seasoning stuff. She makes everything from scratch. So like this muscle shop, learn it from her. When I make, uh, instead of getting shrimp broth, I make my own. So I use the head of the shrimp, the skin, the peel of the shrimp. That's how I do my broth. From scratch is still the best. That's like the olden days, guys. That's that's amazing. That's more amazing than the ready-to-make product. It's just more tedious to do stuff like that. But you know, honestly, if you really love cooking and you love the people that will eat your dishes, you gotta do it the right way. Now, I'm going to incorporate my juice right here, but I am only going to put right now I only added a, a half a cup of my muscle broth my from scratch so uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop her from at this point and just include uh, half a cup of muscle broth before I move along and pour everything. Like my usual style of cooking, I gradually add ingredients. And honestly guys, that's a really, really great practice because you tend not to overdo anything. Now, I'm going to drop this beautiful angel hair pasta, so divine, so um, delicate. So I'm gonna incorporate our angel hair pasta that's already pre-cooked onto our muscle mixture. So guys, I just wanna let you know that one package, the package that I got for the angel hair pasta is about a 16 ounce package. And what I'm using right now is only half of the package. So pretty much our pasta here, our angel hair pasta here is about eight ounces. Oh. Angel hair pasta. So right now what I'm gonna do is mix all these guys in our pot together. Mix, mix, mix. It's looking so beautiful, guys. Already. Ooh. So there you go. We're done. I only use half a cup of our muscle juice. Now, guys, if you ever find that you need more juice, you can always add, okay? You can always add, remember that. But for me, this is already perfect. And I'm already ready to turn off the heat 
in a while after I add our finishing touches. So at this point, with super low heat, I am going to drizzle about one tablespoon of olive oil, like so. One tablespoon, and then I am going to put some cheese. Now guys, what I'm using is just a clean white uh, cheese, Monterey Jack. Cheddar cheese has a very salty and um, very sharpy flavor, even if it's just the mild cheddar cheese that you get. It's still a little sharp for me. I just want my cheese kind of clean and delicate. Hence, I use this guy. So, what I have here is actually half a cup of Monterey Jack cheese. I'm already preparing our pasta to look incredible. So this is already in preparation of how I would serve my pasta, guys. I'm gonna show some of those mussels right there. And of course, you wanna show some of your tomatoes. Right there. Because you want to show some color. The red always pops up and it creates that beautiful balance and contrast of color on your dish. Now, I'm not going to stop here because I'm still going to put my greens. So I'm going to turn off the heat now. This baby is already good to go. Perfect for any parties, any celebration, you're going to look like a mega pro creating this dish and contributing it to any party that you're, you're gonna go to. So I'm just going to uh, incorporate one fourth cup of chopped up green onions that I actually gathered from my backyard. I only took like three sprigs. And this is what I have, a fourth cup. And we are done, guys, finished. I'm now going to show you what we have created. So, if you guys are ready, here we go. Beautiful, delicious. <gasps> ah. Thank you. <laughs> Did you? Did you guys? Look at that. So delicious looking. So can you imagine taking this casserole to a party, a get together, a celebration, or you have friends over, and this is what you are going to serve? My goodness, all compliments the whole evening. There you go, guys. There you go, guys. We have wrapped up another great episode. We have here our mussel in angel hair pasta with red sauce. It's incredible. It's beautiful. It's worthy of celebrations, occasions, and just good old days. Anyway, guys, I just want to say thank you so much for being with me here once again. I am Shelly Cowell, the Dining Diva, and if you ever get to try this dish, please take a photo, post it on my pages, um, share your experience with me. I would love, love, love to hear about how it worked for you. Hit me up, guys. I am in YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. The Dining Diva, don't forget to please like, love, share, and subscribe. I will see you guys again on my next episode. Thank you so much and God bless you all. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Bye.